So, once we have dealt with our craziness of this final fight, this incident can finally be fully resolved, and even the combined might of these sisters were no match for Yoku. It really is just a one-woman army for that final fight. <laughs> Impossible. It went all out, but they were still destroyed. It's easy to answer. Yeah, you were picking a fight with the Hakurei Shrine Maiden. <laughs> More importantly, you were picking a fight with Yomu, and the things that her sword can cut are nothing, uh, next to nothing, so... Yeah. So yeah, basically everybody has their own little pose moments here, and uh... Yeah. Yomu, you did us proud. <laughs> yep, so Notori actually didn't need to come into play there. I was considering using Notori's uh, camouflage at one point. I really should have, actually. I have no idea why I didn't do that on the second last turn. I guess that just shows that you really don't have to do it, though. You really do not have to use Notori in that uh, final fight, if you don't want to. Uh, Notori is pretty difficult to use in the fight as a whole, to be completely honest, because she's not so good at fighting... Uh, in the first phase, despite having elemental attacks, because, uh, you know, divine barriers are kind of hard for her to get through. And as a commander, she's great, because she can defend your party from an attack at one point. But, uh, yeah, basically Raymu is your opponent, and that's it. And so <laughs> everybody just starts laughing, because it's like, yep, yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> Game over. They're... Their uh, their little test was successful. So, what's so funny? That's it. They give up. They have been completely destroyed. There is no way in hell that they can possibly finish us at this point. And because the people of Gensokyo are so strong, they're like, yeah, we can chill out now. We don't have to worry about being, you know, guardian deities and everything. Because that's truly it. Like, Raimu still doesn't understand because they haven't revealed what they were uh, planning yet, or why they did all of this, right? But yeah, the, the incident is going to stop, and that's it. So, oh, suddenly cooperative. <laughs> yeah, well, it's slightly rude, but not really. But they never har they never wanted to harm Gensokyo. Like, seriously harm it at the very least. And I guess you could see that from Vio not, you know, when Vio showed that her mist could affect humans if she wanted it to, or even amplify life force. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. They had an agenda, and that's what they uh, that's what they set out to achieve. However, da 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 da, this was just a game, and that voice, it is indeed Yukari. She is still alive. Apparently, she did not get petrified. Because, yeah, Lady Yukari is around. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, that's right, Vario hasn't seen her yet. It's uh, Litos, who's a bit shocked to see Yukari here, because she thought that uh, she managed to beat Yukari. And uh, it's like, eh, how did you manage to get out here? But that, spoilers, is not actually Yukari. There are not two of them at all, no. Why are you still alive? Yep. Nope. That is just a statue. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, Yukari. Yep. Why didn't you try and attack again? Because it's Yukari. That's not what she does. She did indeed have so many chances to, to take you out. But that's not for, uh, that's not for Yukari to do. It's Rimu that has to do that, so Yukari was just the evaluation squad. I guess if they, if Litos really proved to be that much of a problem for Yukari, then she would have taken her out. But she was happy that uh, that Litos wasn't going to be enough of a threat that Rimu couldn't win. <laughs> and, uh, Litos is just like, oh dear god, we are outclassed here so badly. <laughs> Yep, as a just a yokai, not even a god hero, just a regular yokai is as strong as Yukari here. Uh huh. It's a really interesting place for them. And Raymond's just like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> it is just a game, yep. The goal that was mentioned. 
So, what else were you trying to achieve then? Go was... Cut to the credits! Yep! They aren't going to reveal their goals just yet. So, now that the incident is over, we get a little bit of recap over the, uh, the other characters and stuff that we had to deal with. This is all automatic at this point, so everybody's going back to their home and seeing that the incident is all fully resolved and everything is uh, happy, hunky-dory stuff. So yeah, it's just as you see, everything is already there. So that is pretty freaking cool. Now, I think I'm actually going to just uh, let this play out for a little bit. I will come back and talk when it doesn't, you know, go automatic, but I think I'll just let this go. Just like the opening cutscene. I think it's better that way. So yeah.
And so, finally, we return here once again. <laughs> oh, it has been quite the adventure, but as you can see, I mean, this is still automatic, but we're just about at the end of the automatic stuff at this point because we've gone through everybody, even the adversaries who are not really that bad after all, as you can tell. They were just looking to test against Tokyo and see if it was worth them setting up shop here. You know, being gods and all, they wanted to see if it was a viable option for, I guess, collecting faith and doing the usual things that they do as gods. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun sort of game to go with this if you like RPG stuff. I... I mean, I guess I may as well go through the uh, this stuff here. This is one of my favorite RPGs in terms of, uh, you know, non-old stuff. Like, I've never really been into Final Fantasy as the, the major RPG that everybody seems to go on about, especially from what I've seen of Verse 7. Like, I'm not trying to hate on Final Fantasy here, but it is not my scenario at all. Like, I am not a fan of... Uh, the setting for stuff like that, but RPGs as a whole is something which I have always really enjoyed. Like, I used to play a fair few on the SNES, not all of them, but uh, even the sort of action RPG style things like Secret of Mana was really good. Uh, I was actually one of the few people who did like Mystic Quest, despite, you know, what I just said about Final Fantasy stuff. I thought it was really cool as uh, a basic thing. Like, it was very basic, but still fun to play. Illusion of Time, another sort of more action-based one. Of Illusion of Gaia, I think it is, in the US, is uh, a really good one. And then, the N64 didn't really have RPGs, unfortunately, but uh, Golden Sun on the GBA was another one, which I played an awful lot. And now we get a sort of final, traditional style of video. Now you know it's a Toho game when we have uh, this sort of stuff. But yeah, Breath of Fire was another one which I played a, a relatively good amount of, and I've just always kind of liked that. And of course then there's Pokemon, which is one of, still one of my favourite like general game series and stuff. But yeah, it's RPGs have been something I've grown, I've grown up with and played for a long time, and this is one of those that I don't go back to very often in terms of like a full playthrough like this. This is the first time I've actually played this game fully in a long time. It's only the second time I've fully completed it, but it's a fantastic game to play. It's very hard, and it will probably destroy you a bit more than the average RPG would, but I don't see that as a bad thing because of the way the mechanics are, and because of the the way that the game is uh, structured now, it was more annoying when you could lose your items if you died to, uh, to like a bullshit encounter, but now that your items are kept regardless and you get more of them, the game is more accessible than it was before without being ridiculously easy. It is easier, but it is still not easy to beat, and you do still need to do a decent bit of leveling. I think my setup here was around about the lowest sort of levels that you could be for, uh, you know, for having a complete thing of this. I remember Ross, uh, I was no, asking Ross and uh, Kibatu, uh, Kibatu actually did an LP of this as well, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. But um, I remember asking those two what sort of levels they were at because I was massively over leveled the first time I did this, and they averaged between around about five to nine levels higher, with uh, Aya being significantly higher level for them, like 13 or 14 levels higher. So. Yeah, you don't need that excessive high level, but you do need certain skill stuff for it. And honestly, that first phase could have still gone a lot better there. But fantastic game, and I do not regret playing through this. This is my longest playthrough by now, for sure. But yeah, I do not regret playing this in the slightest. However, this is not quite where we end the story here. There is one extra thing which I want to do. Uh, just so you know, you can choose to play the expansion or not, depending on uh, you know your preference there. 
I still don't know if I am going to play the expansion for an LP format because the expansion is where the grindy stuff comes in and I honestly feel like I'm too under leveled to do the expansion. I'll be totally honest with you. I could open up my other file and I could still play it from there, but I seriously don't know if I want to do that. But yeah, you can this you could basically just act as if you've never cleared the final boss and uh, keep on playing through the regular stuff. So the one thing I do want to do before closing this project up proper is to show off the like alternative modes of a couple of the characters. Like I've always said, say Sanai has always just been a support my mage, but she does have attacking options, and some of them are actually kind of cool when you've got the uh, the sneak tree available and stuff like that. It's actually kind of neat. Um, in my original playthrough and the Yokai Mountain stage, I actually used Sana as an offensive character because of the uh, MP regeneration that she can have with her snake tree. It's pretty fun. Uh, obviously, we also have Marissa with some physical options in her broom tree. Patchouli has got physical options up here. I want to show that stuff off. And Alice, I briefly showed off how her physical stuff works, but I could do that again as well. I'm not going to bother with Satori's physical stuff because it isn't anything special. Like, it's basically just Satori using physical attacks. <laughs> There's nothing fancy about that at all. Like, you've got a couple of augments in terms of uh, damage in her uh, status trees, but beyond that, it's not unique. It's not an entirely different mode for her to play in. Um, I think I've shown off Devil Oka before, so I don't really need to bother with that. The Archeron doesn't have a physical attack mode, and Aya doesn't really have anything that we haven't already seen as well. So, basically, I have a few alternative things to show off. Just some fun stuff that you don't really want to use during the game, because it's not using the characters to uh, their proper potential. Although, once or twice, they're, you know, in select stages, as we found out during the playthrough, then they can be kind of cool. But I just want to show off what some of the characters can do with their fun stuff, and that will basically be it. So I guess you'll need to let me know if you want to actually see the post-game stuff. Um, it is an entirely new story, though, in a sense. Like, it's not a full story mode, but it is another probably 60 part. <laughs> Effectively, it's own LP, so, you know. If you really want to see stuff that way, then maybe we can work something out for it, but, uh... For now, this has been GamerCal playing Toho, the genus of Sapphiros, for just about the final time. And next time, we'll show off stuff that I mentioned, and call it at that. Thank you guys very much for watching this, and until next time, take care.